Welcome to programming. Today we are going to start with introduction to programming and uh, at the end of this lesson we'll try to answer two questions. What is programming language and what are the types of programming language? However, if you want to define what is programming, language at this 20th century it is actually very difficult to get up a, a correct definition. This is because most of programming languages they are dependent on technology and technology today it is actually very dynamic and changes from day to day. So there is no correct answer in this 20th century because whatever a definition which hold in the 19th century cannot hold today and to make it uh, a bit worse whatever definition was there maybe even six months ago it is not correct today because technology it is very dynamic so let's start and try to analogize and understand first of all what is a language instead of what is a programming language so let's take up a very simple scenario if there are two people who want to communicate with each other it is very much obvious that if two human beings want to communicate with each other then both of them must understand a particular language and this particular language will must be understood by both human beings for them to communicate if they have to if they want to communicate for example in english both the subject must understand english however if they want to communicate in kiswahili Both the subject must understand Kiswahili. And if you are coming from Middle East, then both of you must understand Arabic for the two of you to communicate. Let's take this particular scenario further and see how will it be if a human being wants to communicate with a computer. Here we have got a human being who wants to communicate with a digital device. So, does this particular rules actually apply for both of them? Let's see. If we are talking about a human being a human being actually understands words. A human being understands words while when you're talking about a digital device, actually understand digital logic, and digital logic is represented by zero and one. So it is actually impossible for us to communicate directly with a computer. This is because the rules of words <coughs> basically we must understand the morphology of a language and here, when you're talking about mythology of, um, um, mythology of a language, you're talking about the word construction or word structures. How words in a particular language are structured. Also, we must understand 
the syntax of a language. And here when we're talking about the syntax of a language, we're talking about how words in a particular language are put in a particular order. And the last thing for us to understand a particular language, we must also understand the science of phonology. Phonology, basically, we are talking about the sounds pattern of a particular language. So it's very, very important to understand those particular words. Now, when we are talking about digital device, when we are talking about digital device, we have seen digital device, we understand what you call binary system. Now, when we are talking about binary systems, we are talking about zero and ones. And for us to assimilate as human being, zero and one becomes actually very difficult. So we cannot communicate directly. We cannot communicate directly with a computer. So what happens? It is that earlier scientists sat down and come up with a way of how human beings can communicate with a particular device. So let's take this particular scenario, how human beings can communicate indirectly. So if this is a human being, wants to communicate with a computer or a digital device, let say, What happens, it is, we should understand the concept of writing up a program. So we are going to write up a program. And then we should have predefined converters. So you are going to have predefined converters and these converters their basic work is to do what is to convert the program into a digital logic so this actually will enable this will enable a human being to communicate with a computer indirectly. So let's take this particular scenario and see how a human being can communicate with our two a digital divide. Let's take for example, we want to communicate to a computer to compute two numbers, just like a calculator. So we can say maybe A is equal to 10 and B is equal to 20 and C is equal to A plus B. And then what do we want to display? C. So in this particular scenario, if you are writing this particular algorithm or instructions to a computer, how will they be taken? Will be taken by what you call converters, and these are pre programs which can convert these particular instructions into digital logic. So, mostly we have what you call compilers, they compile this particular logic into what? They compile it into 0 and 1 and this 0 and 1 it is the language which is understood by the digital device.
So in our case here, when we are taking up this particular instruction and we are trying to add two numbers, 10 and 20, then obviously in our digital device it's going to be seen or display as 20. So this is basically uh, what is a programming language. Therefore, to summarize and to understand and answer our question, basically we can say a programming language, it is a means of writing this particular algorithm that can be understood by both human and the computer device. So with this particular analogy, we conclude that programming language is a means of writing algorithm that can be understood by both humans and machine language. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss what are the types of programming language. Thank you.